Hey guys, uh, Bill here and welcome back. Um, well, obviously we're not at the layout right now. We're out back um, in my back patio and you're looking at the newest addition to my collection. Um, this is the engine is a Lionel SD70 ACE. It's from the 2009 uh, second volume catalog. And uh, you know, this is one that I wanted to buy a long time ago, and but I really wasn't, I had, was mostly MTH back then and really wasn't committed to spending a whole lot of money on the hobby at that point. And uh, as a matter of fact, my first high-end Lionel engine was my uh, Vision Line Genset Switcher, which I got in December of 2010. But anyways, I had seen this engine and really liked it. and. Um, I did purchase in the next catalog, the 2010 Signature Edition catalog, I, I got the Southern Railway SE70 ACE. And, uh, but, you know, these were gone by the time I decided to buy one. So anyhow, um, this is, I love the engine. As you can see, I got the box car and the matching caboose. Um, I also have already ordered the three-bay coal hopper. It's all die cast, uh, car um, that should be here next week and then there's one more car uh, a tank car that looks a lot like the uh, the box car uh, paint job anyways um, it's I'm real happy to have this um, it's got the road number and the crew talk um, it also in my opinion has the best horn of any diesel model engine ever produced in my opinion and there were only four of them made, and we're going to get into that in a little bit later. And there also, this was put out when Lionel was having a lot of problems. I mean, they still have some issues, but back then in 2009, 2010 was like at the height of uh, Lionel's problem with their legacy engines. And we're going to talk about some of those issues and, and the best way to correct them. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and we'll go into the train room, and we'll uh, get started. Hey guys, um, there were four engines that had this great horn, and this is the first one. This is the Canadian National uh, Coal Set. Uh, it first was introduced in Lionel's 2009 Signature Edition catalog. And uh, anyways, there's three other engines. I'm going to show those to you right now. Okay guys, now we're in the uh, 2009 Volume 2 catalog. And as you can see on the left there is the Pensy version. And on the right, uh, which also has this great horn, is the blue and white NS 1982 version. Uh, Eric Siegel has that engine. And um, by the way, also, I'm sure a lot of you guys know, but Matt Train Lever 9943 also just recently purchased the, uh, the Penzi version. And uh, I have to thank you, Matt. He, Matt is the one that informed me that Grzboski's train store had uh, some of these engines in. So uh, if it wasn't for Matt, I wouldn't have it. So definitely a uh, big thumbs up and thanks, Matt. Anyways, on the next page, we have the uh, UP8444, which also, this right here, that also had this great horn. So that's the four engines, and uh, okay, let's move on to the next segment, which is I'm going to talk about some of the issues that Lionel had with these engines, uh, these 2009-2010 SD70 ACEs. Be right back. Okay, guys, um, now we're going to talk about some of the problems that Lionel had with these engines. Um, back in 2009-2010 was when Lionel was having a lot of, a lot of quality issues. Um, you know, they still have some issues, but in my opinion, things have gotten a lot better. Uh, you know, f over the last few years, um, the only problems I've had with any of my Lionel engines is the uh, uh, smoke unit fan motor problem that they had. Quite a few engines had it, but that's it. Nothing else. Anyhow, back to this engine. There were two major problems with this engine. The first problem, which only some of them had, is when you'd get the thing out of the box, the you could hardly hear the sounds um so you know and sometimes they'd kick in you get full volume then the sounds would go back out or you just get it and you could bar just barely hear the sound so i i had this, that problem not with this engine thankfully but i had that problem with my southern railway sd70 ac ace which uh was introduced in lionel's signa 2010 signature edition catalog 
But anyways, I got that engine, had that problem, I sent it into Lionel, got it back, and uh, after five minutes of use, it did it again. So I figured it had to be a bad connection or something. So I took the thing apart, I pulled every wire harness out of every circuit board, pulled all the boards apart, and reassembled everything. And that completely fixed the problem. Apparently there's a bad connection or some kind of type of contamination maybe that once you pull the stuff apart and put it back together, it cleaned it up. And I have not had a single issue with that since. Um, now the other issue is, and most people do not realize this, after all these years, I just talked to a friend of mine who had some of these engines and he still didn't know about this. The, the next problem okay, guys. is that I cut that last clip a little short. I kind of got tongue tied and decided to stop it and start over again. The next issue is in regards to the smoke unit. A lot of people back then, it wasn't actually the smoke unit, by the way, but a lot of people back then were saying the smoker, it's not the elements not getting hot enough, all kinds of things. But what the real problem with these engines is, is that if you have your legacy controls in here set to smoke, not no smoke, but set to smoke, and you, when you turn the engine on, every time this engine, it will, the, the smoke unit comes on in low. Now obviously if you have it to no smoke, it's not gonna come on. But if you go to smoke, and you start this engine, even if you turn uh, the smoke off with your le legacy remote, the smoke unit will turn on every time and low. So if you haven't added smoke fluid to it, what happens is you don't see any smoke, and, but the batting gets burnt. And I'm gonna demonstrate that for you right now. Okay, let me go ahead and put the power on the track. I just added a few smoke uh, droplets of smoke fluid so I don't burn the batting. It's, I put it to smoke. Okay, let's start her up. Oh shoot, I turned the wrong, sorry about that. Turned on the wrong track. Okay, here we go. I think I have the, um, the engine noise is all the way down already, but we'll see here. Let's go ahead and start it. Pennsylvania Heritage, 1854, do you read me? Roger that, 1854 here. Start her up and stand by. Roger that. Starting up the engine. Out. Now, it's not smoking yet, but you can hear the whine of the fan motor running. I don't know if you guys can hear that. And it's not smoking yet, but watch when I turn it off with the remote. It stopped. Okay, so we got no... We got no, uh, the smoke is off, right? But the switch here is still in the smoke position. So let's start it again. Hear it? Smoke unit just came on and low. And it's, it may take a minute, or maybe I got a blockage, hold on. There we go. It's just in low. But you can see, I don't know if you guys can see it or not. I don't know if that's going to help. But it's on and low. And these things don't really smoke much until you get them in gear. See, they see that? Now I'll stop it. I'll turn the smoke unit off. I'll stop the engine. See you next trip. Thank you. 1854, out. Okay. Now I'm going to start it. You can hear, come on, see the smoke? They all do it. My Southern Railway unit also does exactly the same thing. So, your best bet is after you, if you want to smoke it, fine. But when you get done, every time you use this engine, if you don't want to burn your batting, is to put this to no smoke. That way, when you start it, you don't have to worry about it. See, it's on now. You don't hear that fan motor coming on. All right, by the way, I got the volume way down here. 
I don't think it really matters when you're making a video, so I got it, still got it way down, but you just heard that great horn. <laughs> it's awesome. And there's your uh, prime mover. Turn it up a little bit. Anyways, alright guys, I just wanted to go over the problems with you. This is not, there's nothing you can do about the smoke coming on automatically other than turning it off here at the uh, legacy controls. Anyways, uh, that's about it. Now let's, we'll go ahead and run this bad boy. Be right back. I tell you, I just can't get enough of the horn on this thing. Again, you guys may disagree with the sound, but to me, this thing sounds great. It's a beautiful engine too. I wish the light was better in here so you could really Anyways, I'm glad to have it. By the way, it was supposed to be brand new in the box, and it's, but it's it's been used a little bit. I could tell it was definitely not wrapped in the factory wrapping, and somebody had taken the engine out and and without wrapping it, stuck it back in the foam, you know, the foam part of the box, and you could see the wheel prints inside the box. So it definitely wasn't totally new, but. I'm keeping it anyways. Cause you just can't find these engines. Sorry about the shaky camera action. I'm trying to do the remote and uh, the camera at the same time here. And I'll tell you, this, both the box car and the caboose are beautiful, but the caboose is just stunningly beautiful. I mean, they did a great job on that. It's just a color combination. Just, and again, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, just like the sounds are in the ears of the beholder. But I think it's flipping gorgeous, and I can't wait to get the hopper 
and uh, I'm still looking for the tank car. Hope I can get it. Anyways, all right, guys, that's enough. You have a great one, and we'll catch you later. Bye.